Hi, welcome to uh, CES 2020. I'm here at Texas Instruments. I'm one of the uh, business managers for our Jacinto 8S processors, and today we are um, going to talk a little bit of our Jacinto 7 uh, devices. So this is a, a new platform uh, uh, family, and uh, really the first two areas that we are introducing is our DRA 8 SOC family, which is really for um, intended for gateway inside the car, as well as our TDA4 family of SOCs, uh, more intended for our 8S uh, portion of the car. So it's high performance and also real time, right? Absolutely, and that's a, it, our, these devices actually will sit in the car and we'll be doing a lot of the analytics um, real time. Uh, so it's an ARM Cortex? It has the, uh, the just into 7, seven family uh, showcases a Cortex A72 as well as uh, R5Fs, uh, in addition to a, a number of other uh, compute cores, which are uh, not limited to the, the TI DSP, C7X DSP, our uh, MMA, and, and several other accelerators that really help uh, achieve that real-time performance uh, for these applications. So is this targeted for the self-driving cars or? So you can see here that really a lot of the ADAS applications kind of bucketizes into two groups. You've got smart parking and then smart driving. And you can see here we've got two demos that uh, here we have the TDA4 SOC that's showcasing a, a front camera. It's a smarter driving application. It's able to uh, identify objects on the road and classify. Is it a car? Is it a road? Is it a pedestrian? Right? Um, is that for a full self-driving system or just for enhanced driving? So, I, it, you know, a lot of um, it is getting to enhanced driving. So you, a lot of systems today uh, have very limited um, ADAS functionality. If you look at high-end cars versus low-end cars, there's a pretty big gap in terms of what type of ADAS functions are available. And so t features like this allow uh, our tier ones and OEMs to really kind of bring those features across an entire fleet of cars. And so that's what kind of what you're seeing here are some of these functions that now can be enabled um, based on the Jacinta 7 TDA4 class family. Uh, because we offer the scalability for very high level com processing compute towards kind of more um, a, a higher levels of autonomy as well as uh, uh, more cost affording, uh, affordable. It's functions. even become kind of mandated to have this kind of uh, backwards facing smart cameras now because um, it's for safety and also very important. Yes, yeah, so if you look at uh, all for, there is a, you're right, safety is a big piece of this, right? If you're um, backing out from a parking spot, um, is there a pedestrian uh, behind you? If you're coming out of a grocery store, uh, is there a person kind of moving a, a cart? Um, so these types of features are very, very useful. A lot of customers are uh, really demanding this in, across more cars, but it's not just for backwards and reversing, also in parallel parking situations. Um, and if you move to other countries, we are starting to see more valet parking, for example, where the car is actually parking itself even without a driver there. That's so cool. What are you showing here? Um, this is a demo uh, that kind of shows a... Uh, the chip uh, is there? It, this is the EVM platform right here. Uh, this chip is right underneath... Uh, this is development kit? Yes, development this, is platform? The, the, this is the TI development platform, that's correct. And if you look here on the screen, um, this is eight megapixel captured data uh, and uh, doing multi-class object detection on and, the road. Uh, and then one? from this data, it's actually taking that and then building a localization map. So uh, it's taking this data along with GPS and uh, IMU CAN data and then being able to actually do a full localization. It's doing all of this on a single SOC. And if you can see here, uh, passively cool. There's no fan. Uh, so if you touch it here, nice. it's not really warm. And um, so how much, the, for example, does the DSP do or the other accelerators that TI is famous for? Right. So algorithms like this that you see here um, really kind of take a fusion. A lot of customers are fusing both computer vision as well as deep learning and putting that together. Um, and if you look at kind of what these algorithms require, it's, they're very, very math heavy. 
Uh, so these accelerator blocks that we have inside uh, of the chip really allows a lot of these math heavy computations to happen in parallel very fast and very efficiently. And that's what really enables kind of these solutions to be a lot more power efficient, um, as well as get the, kind of the performance level that you need for low, mid, and high-end systems. Does it have GPU also, right? It does also have a GPU. And it also does a bunch of stuff on the GPU. Right, so for example, here's an example of a, of a car rendering here. Um, where we actually, this is part of what we offer in our SDK development kit today, uh, which is in a, a, some example starter code. Uh, what does this do, a simulator like a car? It is a simulating, so you can see that this is a, kind of showing four cameras stitched together to create this 360 degree surround view, um, as well as a GPU based rendered car. Uh, and as the kind of the car is moving, you can kind of see how the, the image gets recreated and stitched up here in the screen. But this code is offered as part of the standard SDK so that customers can really get their applications running a lot faster. It's possible for you to do a full self-driving car like this, with this solution? It, it, I, this, this will continue to scale. So as algorithms get better um, and our customers demand more, we'll be able to uh, meet, the na meet the needs of the market. Uh, what is over here? Um, okay, yeah. so yeah, this one right here actually shows um, a, this is again based on our TDA4 EVM right here. And what, we've, what we're showing is uh, eight two megapixel cameras all uh, shown off of a single chip. And uh, the, imp with the, the chip also has as an, one of the accelerator blocks an ISP. And all of these are handled um, by a single chip on the EVM. Hi, so my colleague just showed you how Jacinto solves ADAS um, applications. My name is Katrina Twazen. I'm from Texas Instruments, and I'm going to talk to you about how Jacinto helps solve vehicle compute systems and gateway systems. So what are you holding there? So this is the, the new Jacinto uh, device. This is our EVM. This is available on TI.com. So development, development kit? Yes. And uh, what is a compute gateway? So as um, more data, more, there's more and more data moving through the car as we move to self-driving vehicles. So that means that um, instead of tiny MCUs uh, moving data throughout the car, you're going to need big, powerful system on chips or SOCs. So this is what uh, a vehicle compute system is, is uh, multiple compute systems um, talking to, communicating to each other in a domain. So what Jacinto is addressing is um, integrating external features typically found in a vehicle compute system into one chip and using and uh, routing data throughout the vehicle compute system. So does that simplify the car also? Yeah, it because simplifies both the um, car, the board design, and also saves on uh, bomb cost. And. Uh, what, so is, what is running right here and there? Um, what's showing here is what um, we had previously talked about in this diagram. So this is three uh, compute SOCs, in this case three Jacinto devices, um, talking to each other through our integrated PCIe switch. So they're, communicate, they're routing data via PCIe using um, our PCIe switch. And Jacinto is the first SOC in the market to um, fully integrate a hardware PCIe switch into the device. So that means you can scale, you can have as many as you want to accelerate yeah. things or? So you can scale from uh, just talking from one SOC to another SOC or if you want a really big powerful compute platform system you can talk to multiple um, SOCs so anywhere from two to four. So uh, 